Thanks for staying with us on the conversation. We just finished conversations in Nigeria. Right now, we move to South Africa, where the Justice Minister, Ronald Lamola, has declined to step down following the escape of notorious Facebook rapist uh, and murderer Thabo Bester from a privately operated prison. Bester had been arrested in Tanzania last week and was flown back to South Africa on a chartered plane. Bester had used social media to lure his victims and was referred to as the Facebook rapist. Bess's girlfriend, a well-known doctor, was also deported following the arrest. Now, during a meeting with the Parliamentary Committee, and Justice Lamola apologised for the prison break and took full responsibility. However, he stated that he would not resign since he had fulfilled his obligations as a Justice Minister. He further emphasised that it was the duty of the Department of Correctional Services to ensure that inmates remain in custody until the end of their sentences. Now, joining us uh, for this discussion, we have Anthony Casaboni, Head of Research Institute for the Future of Knowledge, University of Johannesburg, South Africa. We also have Patrick Kadima, a legal analyst, and Zama Shona, spokesperson, African Transformation movement in South Africa. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. So I'd like to start uh, with you. Uh, can you tell us more about the circumstances surrounding the escape of Thabo Besta, also known as the Facebook rapist? Can you tell us about the circumstances that led to the arrest of the of Thabo Besta, known as the Facebook rapist, the the escape and capture of him, Patrick? Yes, yes, uh, I can hear you now. Sorry. Uh, so um, here we are faced with um, uh, Thabo Besta, the said. Uh, convicted criminal who, with his accomplice, uh, Dr. Uh, Nantipa, had escaped the country and um, were found in Tanzania, um, I think it was a few days back, um, and they were apparently 10 kilometers away from the border uh, between Tanzania and Kenya. Now, they were arrested there on the charges of uh, being um, illegal in Tanzania and uh, therefore uh, they were you know they were deported after authorities had exchanged information and so on and so forth uh, the only solution from there on was a deportation that was going to have to take place I mean there were definitely arguments that no extradition uh, needs to take place because you know the SADC, um a protocol on extradition needs to take place and so on and so forth. But here, legally, uh, extradition did not have to take place because these people were found illegal in a country, which was Tanzania, and therefore the automatic consequence of that was deportation. Obviously, subject, I mean, to uh, legal processes or uh, domestic laws that Tanzania has. Uh, therefore, that's why we see that both of them have returned to the country and um and have uh, appeared uh, uh, in court you know for the first uh, step that needs to be undertaken all right now patrick still story i mean there's been a lot of outrage and uh, looking at the fake death and the escape of that tabo bester uh, how would you look at it i mean there's a lot of talk about lack of accountability from the government what's the level of public outrage over this case no i mean public outrage is is, is, is justified i mean we here we are talking about a convicted criminal who escaped one of the most secure prisons in the country uh, in some in some bizarre fashion um you know and 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 public outrage is is is, is justified i mean we're in a country where crime is very high we're in a country where rape is very high um and and when you have such a convicted criminal uh, being able to leave the country i mean being able to leave prison in such a way, then you ask yourself, what, what has become of the justice system? What has become of the of the of the of 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 of, of the justice system? Because 
we have somebody here who escaped, you know, not even running away from, 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 you know, underground in, in a jail cell or so on and so forth. He was, he was, he was aided by officials there. And one thing I just want to mention is that um, also this brings to light what we, we, we the public private partnerships that are in place. You know, I mean, I, I've seen many people, many experts talking about maybe it's time we review public private partnerships. I mean, uh, we should not we should not be immune to criticizing public private partnerships because the the, the, the prison itself was not run by 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 by, by the, the correctional services department itself, but it was run by G4S. I mean, a multinational uh, security company. Now, Patrick, uh, still talking about criticisms, uh, what do you make of Justice Minister's uh, Ronald Lamolo's statement that he was not going to resign following the escape of Thabo Besta? How, many, how much uh, responsibility does he bear? He's pushed the blame to the uh, Department of Correctional Facilities. Yeah, uh, uh, honestly, my opinion is I don't think uh, this is... is, 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 is sufficient for him to to for 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 for, for us to call for the res resignation of, of 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 a minister you know i mean um <laughs> the, the the people that are behind these are those officials that have been facilitating all these things and to call for the minister to 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 to, to, to resign because of this um i think it's it's just too much yes maybe if it was in britain and <laughs> or scotland or so on and so forth you know, the, 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 this will have been. I mean, we should take context of, of the society we live in, and I don't think this is warrants uh, the call for a resignation. But yes, it does call for, 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 for accountability. It does call for the minister to be held accountable. It does call for the security cluster to have an introspection about whether the, 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 the justice system is really, really, really doing what it's supposed to be. Doing, you know, and and um, it's not an excuse. The fact that I'm not calling for his re resignation or supporting his resignation, uh, I mean, supporting the cause for his resignation does not mean I'm not supporting the cause for accountability uh, from the minister and so on and so forth. Hmm. Um, but yes, there needs there is a certain there is a certain uh, 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 degree to where to which we must call for 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 um, accountability. Uh, with the ministers that are part of the security cluster. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Patrick. I'd like to bring in Dr. Kaziboni into all of this uh, situation. And uh, sorry, I'd like to bring in um, Shona into all of this, Zaman Shona, right, right now. Now, looking at all the issues there, I mean, one of the issues Patrick mentioned was this private owned uh, partnership. And we're seeing that uh, Tabo Besta was the privately owned prison. So tell us how the transfer went. And I suppose that with the kind of case, uh, he was handling, he should have been in the government-owned prison. So tell us more about the government-owned prison and how he ended up in a private-owned prison. All right. Um, we are, I'm struggling to hear you there, but as the African transformation movement, I think we must start here. It is important to note that the minister in question is truly exposed with this a Tabo Besta phenomenon, the escape. He has been exposed in that, in the single most uh, expensive line item, item in uh, his budget, which is incarceration. Mm. He is not able to speak to the needs of the people of South Africa. Remember that we put criminals away in the interest of safety and security. We put criminals away so that there is no further victimization of the victims. We put criminals away so that those who torment society may be subjected to a process of corrections. And not unless the system has satisfied itself that the people who we have put away are now ready to be rehabilitated back into society. So not until that has happened, we are not or sh we shouldn't be finding ourselves in a situation where we have those who have not finished their sentences coming back into society in this manner. It is an embarrassing situation. And this embarrassment, if the minister was able to comprehend, was able to comprehend the inadequacies under his leadership, 
his um, inadequacies to be able to deal with this issue. You would remember that in South Africa currently, the Corrections Ministry has been dealing with some problems when it comes to issues of prisons. Uh, we have had more prison breaks in the last weeks and months, which shows that the criminals are not sleeping, but the people who are paying for the job, they are sleeping on the job. Now, this is why the African Transformation Movement we feel that if this minister knew what kind of an embarrassment he has caused, or this particular occurrence has actually caused, he would be, if he was honorable, he would fall on his sword. He would say, with this, we are exposed. The security is exposed. The system is exposed. And most importantly, the, 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 the security cluster as the whole, that we find this individual countries away from South Africa, and nobody was able to detect now, the weaknesses of the system, they need somebody to account, and one of those first people must be Minister Lamola. Thank you very much. Uh, now, back to you, Patrick, talking about accountability. We've seen what happened, and uh, I think it goes uh, beyond uh, the uh, Justice Minister. There are also questions of uh, how did he get out of the country? Hmm. Uh, what, what's, who helped him? How did he escape justice? Now, what measures should be put in place to ensure that high-profile criminals uh, like Besta are securely held and prevented uh, from escaping? And what steps should the Department of Correctional F Services uh, take to prevent similar incidents in the future? Thank you so much. It is going to be important. Okay, maybe let me just also share this background. You would remember in the same facility, history tells us, reports tell us that Anania Smate, who is an escapee of note in South Africa, was also incarcerated in the same facility. And a lot of money was put into that facility in trying to make sure that such incidents will never happen again. Fast forward to where we are today, the criminals have been able to spot the inadequacies of the system. Now, what does this mean? It means that the officials on this single line budget item which takes the chunk of the budget of uh, the corrections ministry it means that they should be on a, even if it's fortnightly monthly quarterly they must always part of what they do is to evaluate if the system can still in the interest of safety and security keep people in there must be reports which are released on uh, to the security cluster on this matter. Another issue which needs to be done, it was exposed in Parliament yesterday. There is no coherent strategy or synergy between systems of this country. When your fingerprints are taken at the correctional centre, mm. there is no synergy between what is happening in the correctional centre with what is happening at the borders with mm -hmm. what is happening in the Department of Home Affairs, mm. which is what could be happening in the mid, in the in the police ministry. And mm. as a result, people are able to escape somewhere and use their fingerprints elsewhere. And the system won't be able to respond and detect, detect and flag that there is such an individual who has actually moved away from a particular facility. And where is it in the system can this particular individual be located? Mm. Now, this speaks to the inadequacies of the security cluster to be able to pick up criminals as they as criminals are moving into the streets and roaming the streets of South Africa. So this is one. So the corrections facility must have regular checks, regular determination on the ability to keep uh, uh, criminals away. All right. But also, the security cluster as a whole must also come on board so as to make sure that if there's a breach in one system, the other system must be able to come in and actually come to the aid of the other system so that we pre prevent criminals from being reintegrated into to society prematurely. Thank you so much. So now I want Patrick to have a final say on this. I mean, I wonder if this is a general uh, thing happening to all the security clusters. I mean, when you talk about privately run prisons and government owned prisons, and uh, what has the government done to respond to these issues of Tabo Mbese and the uh, uh, so called prison escape that we're seeing uh, largely in South Africa? 
Uh, sorry, may you please repeat that question? I said we're looking at the issues of the privately run prisons. Now, Shona mentioned some of the issues there. So first of all, is it particularly with, particular with private run prisons or is it a general occurrence in most prisons in South Africa? And what has been the government's response to Thabo Bester's at, at, at prison escape? No, I mean, <clears throat> you know, uh, as, as, as we have seen, um, you know, the one thing is that it's not, it's not only... Uh, you know, uh, this, you know, the prison system has been exposed in general, and it's not the first escape that happens, I mean, in that, in that same correctional facility. I would not say it, it is, it is private run prisons problem only. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a problem of the, of the correctional services in general. I mean, others escape in other correctional facilities. There is a lot of corruption going on in these correctional facilities, whether it's private or public. But what I would like to highlight is that, um, what I would like to highlight is that uh, there, there is a need for reform in the prison system. You know, there is a need for reform. And, and if, if those reforms are not going to happen urgently, then um, unfortunately things are going to stay the same. Ten, ten years down the line, we'll have another escape. Five years down the line, we'll have another escape. And, and, and this is going to affect, you know, uh, the trust, not only in the correctional services, but in the justice system generally. And it's important that if, if, if um, th there's a need that society believes uh, in a strong, um, uh, uh, um, and, you know, a strong, um, uh, what is the justice system? So, I mean, and I mean, I, we did see, uh, I did see uh, um, in Ra in Russia, the the presidency had said it was really, you know, concerned about the escape of 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 of, of Tabo Besta uh, from 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 the correctional facility, but. Um, what I want to say is that, um, in, in closing, that uh, there is a need uh, for reforms, and okay. uh, these reforms are agent. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. Patrick Kadima, legal analyst, uh, and also Zaman Sona, spokesperson, African Transformation Movement. Uh, we do appreciate your time and contribution to the program. Thank you. Thank you.